Okay, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna start going off. Of okay. Is it running? Yeah. I've, I I I've been recording the last like thirty five minutes. I said cut though. I know I, I know you said cut, but I, I just what is what is the action? <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, so we'll Dino Day 2.0, uh, the morning, well, shit, cut. <laughs> <laughs> and action. All right, Dino Day 2.0, we were supposed to load up the car the night before. Uh, things came up and we could not. So we had to load up the morning of. Um, as soon as we started to drop the ramps down to get it on the trailer, it started raining a lot. So we're loading the car up on the trailer in the rain, already trying to push it so we're not late. Uh, rip the exhaust hanger off of this, trying to get it up the ramp. Get it all on the trailer, get it going. We're about 30 minutes behind schedule. Still make it up. Uh, about an hour and a half into the trip to the tuner, the idler pulley on the truck seized up and snapped the belt. So we're in a Duramax, driving down the highway, 70 miles an hour, towing a trailer, no brakes, no power steering, no battery. You need no brakes? <laughs> no, because it's all off the, uh, it's a vacuum system. Oh, shit. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So, no power brakes. Well, we had brakes, but no power brakes. Yeah. Uh, so we drive like 10 miles to find an O'Reilly's, get the part, fix in the parking lot. I call the guy to make sure we're still good. He's like, yeah, just come on over. So we finally get to the dyno place. Two hours past scheduled time. We're unloading the car. Well, we got there like at, we had an hour and a half overdue, and then we just sat and fixed it the was, car for well, 30 minutes. Oh yeah, we did, yeah. Because we had to fix the exhaust coming off the trailer. Well, oh, we didn't. had to stop at a truck stop to find random Yeah, we had to get random shit from a gas try, station. To try to band-aid it so it would last through the dyno. I mean, it's kind of best case because you could have caught your flange and ripped your entire exhaust off or bent your header. Yeah, I really didn't want to mess with cutting it off. No. <laughs> so after we get it off the trailer, we're, we got the car jacked up in the air trying to band-aid this exhaust so it holds up on the dyno. Uh, and a guy in a little mini bike comes down and asks, does it run? I was like, yeah, it runs, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Little did we know that was the actual tuner. <laughs> so we get it down, talk to the guy where we need to go to the shop next door, back the car up into the dyno ramps, and start hooking everything up. First thing right away, incorrect injectors. Should have had better ones. They work for the car, but they are uh, not rando eBay not ones. Not the best quality, which I've learned. Yeah. Uh, but they work. <laughs> so multiple runs, cycling through, getting drivability done with the new Honda ECU. Uh, I think we probably what. Three hours, almost three hours. There, it felt like a yeah, long it was distance. a while. Um, I think it was two uh, two hours. We we got we got out there in about two hours. I think half hour load time either way. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so doing that, one of the issues we ran into was the catch can setup that was on there just wasn't enough because it doesn't have a baffled valve cover. And <laughs> it was just fucking spewing shit. Yeah. So was fighting with the catch can setup. Keep in mind, it's a 13-1 high compression motor, so it's very high compression. Uh, so right now, I currently have just a uh, secondary reservoir for the catch can until I get to a better, bigger catch can. Max power was right at 135 with 108 foot-pounds of torque. So seems like a little no, lo, low numbers, but when you equate that to EM1 B16A numbers, that's right on par. So B16 numbers out of a single cam is pretty damn impressive for an NA motor. So the next step for the build, bigger, better catch can, battery relocation, four two to one header, and skunk two intake manifold and a 70 mil throttle body. With that combination, oh, and better injectors. Yeah. 
probably I'm probably gonna look into fuel injector cleaning. Mm -hmm. So better injectors, all of that with some actual data on them. Right, all of that combined, I should be able to get it up to about 150, 155 to the wheels. So that thing's gonna be pretty pretty stout. It's already stout. Yeah, it's, it's it's far improved from what it used to be. So after and even 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 prior, like it was, it was a pretty decent car beforehand. Yeah, decent just had no balls. <laughs> You couldn't kill it, but it just wouldn't go anywhere very <laughs> fast. So, after the final numbers, I was pretty happy after I took a test drive in it and it immediately ripped through second and third gear. <laughs> you also ripped the exhaust hanger off again. It, it came off after the test drive when I pulled back into the lot and it went <laughs> just scraping on the ground. So I was like, well, at least I got the test drive through. So, oh, my God. Got it all done, got it loaded back up in the trailer. Uh, a lot better this time because we had extra wood, better wood. Yeah. Got it loaded back on the trailer, drove the very exhausting two and a half hours back at night in the rain. Unloaded the car, uh, and you can keep in mind each time it just got better and easier. We were just like, Heck, we figured out. Yeah, we've <laughs> done it like four times. We figured out how not to be stupid. Yeah. Got the car off. I brought it in the garage, fixed the exhaust. What else did I do to it? I think I just hung the exhaust up. Oh, I put the bumper back on. And yeah. Then, yeah, so I put the bumper back on and hooked the exhaust back on, hooked the splitter up, and then been driving it ever since pretty much with hardly any issues, aside from the catch can issue, but it's not, not keeping it from driving. Uh, and it's just been a blast. It's a lot easier to throw fireballs now. Yes, yes, it throws massive fireballs. Oh, so the night, the, the, the next day of full driving, took it to the first car meet it's been to in like seven months and entered an exhaust competition just for the hell of it. So that was pretty fun. Uh, and just this thing is a ripper. Like it is surprising how quick it is for the, the little amount of power it has. But the damn thing doesn't weigh that much. I think what twenty two hundred pounds with me in it, something like that. Yeah. Interior's about I don't know seventy five eighty percent gutted. Aside from carpet, interior paneling, sound deadening, door panels, little shit. Sound deadening, dude. I don't think there's really much of it in there. Really? There's not a whole lot. It's I like guess a, it's like a late late nineties. It's a Japanese car from the nineties. Yeah, that's true. You sneeze on the sheet metal wrong and you know you dent it. <laughs> it buckles. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the next game plan for the motor with this. Once I hit that 150 goal mark, I think I'll be pretty happy with the performance figures of it. You ever think you're going to cage it? Eventually. I got it, guy. When I go into full race, full race mode, cage, rear disc conversion. We're not there yet? No. <laughs> Different set of wheels. Cause yeah, rear disc would help you in the... Uh, well, for autocross, not so much. The, uh, the internet does not like my wheels or my side stripe vinyls. Which I thoroughly like. I'm going for that more... Decals look sick. The wheels, I think, are great because they're mild ones. Yeah. I, I prefer, I think, an all-black wheel would just fit the theme a lot better. You could, But the whole theme of the could car... We could spray them all matte black. ...is 90s Kanjo-style Japanese ring racer cars. Mm -hmm. So that's the theme of what I was going for. I dig it. Me too. I have for the last I'd seven, hope so. seven years. <laughs> and I think that's uh, up until next time. That's no, it. no cut? That's it. <laughs> cut!